work is being taught according to the Nigerian Educational Research and Development Council. That's the NEC, NERC curriculum. Then I'll be talking about the benefits of studying biology. What was the stress for? Why the need for studying biology? First, you get the awareness of the environment. You are conscious of this organism, this other organism, its role, its function, and the lights. Then you know the roles and functions of other components of the environment. For instance, you know this particular plant is good for curing this disease, it's good, it aids digestion, it helps you to your body to be free. You, it, this one is good for your body, then this particular plant is poisonous. If you don't study biology, you don't study the study of life, plants and animals, you don't know which plant is poisonous, which one is edible. So biology gives you that knowledge, then you have the knowledge about yourself, your body, what happens in your body, your digestive system, how does it function, your nervous system, circulatory system, and the like. So you understand your body better and you are able to work with that knowledge. It helps you a lot personally for your body now. Then you know how to deal with your body, cleanliness, how you can avoid some diseases by taking care of yourself, taking care of your environment, you prevent some diseases, you can control them, okay, there is a particular symptom you are seeing, you know what to do. Biology helps you first, yourself, your life, it helps you to relate with other organisms, both human, plants and animals. So biology is very, very essential, basically, first of all for you, then to deal to you know about other things, studying biology, you understand the environment, you'll be able to relate better than somebody who does not study biology. Then the courses that you can do with biology, what course can you further on doing biology? First, you can do biology education, teaching some other people about biology. You can do botany or plant science, that's the study of plants majorly. You look in depth into kinds of plants you do, plant anatomy, plant taxonomy, genetics of plants, you know, very interesting things say about plants that is not on the general level, so you can dig down into botany, then you can also do zoology, that is the study of animal, animal science, you know more about the animals, what you can do to prevent extinction, how you can keep them, how you can maximize them and the rest. Then also microbiology. Microbiology is also another course you can do. That's just a small biology. You talk, you deal with microorganisms, organisms that you can only see under the microscope. How they affect us, how they cause disease, how they can be beneficial to man. So you study microbiology. Then biochemistry is another course you can do with biology. Agriculture also is also a a course you can do. Then you have various branches of agriculture. We have agri-economics, agri-extension, crop protection, animal genetics, plant genetics, and the likes. You have a lot of courses under agriculture that you can do with your biology. Medicine. I know you like to do medicine. Medicine is so popular. You want to do medicine. Biology is a building block, a foundation for studying medicine. Then dentistry, the study of the teeth. So you can, with your biology, you go deep, deeper than what you do presently. So biology will help you, can help you to do dentistry. Also pharmacy, drug production and prescription. You know, basically the components of the drug are majorly plants. Plants, exudates, extracts from plants are the major components of your drug. So studying biology can also get to, to further on it doing your pharmacy. Then nutrition and dietetics. What food is good for your body? What should you eat? What should you avoid eating to remain healthy and fit? So you can also study nutrition and dietetics. Then food and nutrition. That's another course related to your food, how you how this food affects so so and so traits in the body. When you eat this food you will light, you can do this exercise. When you eat this, you are so heavy, you can't do it. So food and nutrition is also a good course for under biology. Environmental management, how you can 
do your sewage disposal, prevent ozone layer depletion, maintain the environment, make it a balanced place so you can also do environmental management. Then the jobs that are available for somebody that studies biology, med medical doctor, you can be a medical doctor, that's medicine. Then you can be a researcher. Researcher is in the various fields of biology, studying, discovering new things for us. You know, it's a group of scientists that discover what we are teaching presently. So you can go further, go into the lab, go to the field, discover this new thing, discover that new disease, discover this new virus, you know. So many things you can research on in the field of biology. You can, be, you can also be a botanist, a plant scientist, a zoologist, an animal scientist, a dentist, taking care of people's teeth and helping them prevent decay, dietitian, prescribing food for people for a good health. Then you can be a lecturer at the university or higher institution. You can be a teacher teaching at the secondary school secondary school level, teaching on um, O-level students. Then you can be a microbiologist. Every time you study microbiology, you become a microbiologist, you are able to discover microorganisms that we should avoid, microorganisms that are affecting the body. Then you can be a pharmacist, talking about drugs, the side effects, the ones that should be consumed and the rest. Then you can be an agriculturist, Generate food for the nation, for the nation, plants, crops, uh, rear animals, generate egg, milk, and the like. So you can do a lot of things with biology. First of all, I'll be talking about the scheme of work. And it is divided into three teams, the first, second, and third team. Team one, organization of life. And under that, we'll be talking about recognizing living things, classification of living things, We'll be talking about the kingdoms, kingdom Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae, and Animalia. We'll also be talking about the cell, we'll be talking about the cell and its environment, then some properties and functions of the cell. Team 2, the organism at work. We'll be looking at tissues and supporting system. We'll also be talking about nutrition in animal. And under the team 3, We'll be looking at the organism and its environment, whereby we'll be looking at the basic ecological concepts, the functioning ecosystem, autotrophy, heterotrophy, food waste and trophic level, energy transformation in nature, the relevance of biology to agriculture, microorganisms around us. We'll be looking at towards better health, aquatic habitats, then we'll be looking at terrestrial habitats. Now, let's go to work. Recognizing living things. So we'll be looking at the characteristics of living things. Before you recognize something, when you are, somebody is describing an object to you, before you can identify, okay, this is the thing that, I'm, it is, that is being described to me, you first of all have to know the characteristics or the features of that thing. So that's why I want to look at how can you recognize a living thing. You have to know the characteristics, the features, or the behavioral pattern of living things. So we're looking at the characteristics of living things. And the first is movement. Movement or locomotion, they mean the same thing. All living organisms move. That is, they are not static. They don't just remain. When you, when you say an organism is living and you put it here, and you come in hundred years time and you meet them, no, it will have moved in a way or the other. It's either it moves the whole body or it moves in parts. For instance, plants are also living organisms, but when you plant a tree here, you will still need to adapt position, but it will have increased. The branches will have grown, the roots will have moved further, so that's a kind of movement. And for instance, an animal too. It goes, you, you are sure, it starts to tie it down, it will definitely move. Even if it ties, it will make an attempt to move. So movement is a very, very crucial characteristic of living things. Then the second one is respiration. 
Respiration is the ability of an organism to exchange gases. The two uh, basic gases are the carbon dioxide and the oxygen. Those are the two gases that are being exchanged. Now, animals breathe in oxygen and they breathe out carbon dioxide. Why plants? They take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen. So their ability to exchange these gases, which helps them to coordinate all the other organs in their body, is very, very crucial. Then the next characteristic of living thing is nutrition or feeding. Nutrition is the intake of substances that help the organism to grow and generate energy for its metabolic activity, for its daily or regular activity. So, organism taking substances so that they will have energy to be able to perform other functions. The next characteristic of organism is irritability. Irritability is the ability of a particular organism to respond to external stimulus. What is external stimulus? Let's say, for instance, somebody pinch you with a pin, you respond. Like, 